Hello to you all and uh, thank you for coming once again to another talk about wine. Today we are going to uh, explore the wide range of vintage ports. This, might, this may <laughs> sound strange to some of you, uh, how come vintage ports have a range? Uh, we never heard about it. When we think about a range of tonnies, we think about the 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years old. But regarding uh, vintage, we don't uh, talk about range of vintages. Vintages is one block, is one type of wine, is only one block. But actually, that's not quite like that, especially because on the subtleties of vintage ports. And uh, we not only have one kind of vintage, although all the wines in the Institute, when they are approved, uh, they have vintage potential, and that's no not questionable, uh, but uh, there is also ways of profiling vintages and putting vintages into the market. That's a little bit of this, uh, or is exactly this what we're going to discuss today. And for that, we have once again Bento Amaral, uh, a close friend and a specialist on ports and actually all wines of the world. Hello, Bento. Hi, Paulo. Nice to, to see you again, and it's always great to chat about port wine. Let's do it. <laughs> the pleasure the pleasure is ours. Um, we always think that port is a block. A, a port or vintage port is a monolith. They are all the same and we know what to expect from them. But actually, um, they are quite subtle in some differences. And I think that's what we aim to explain to our viewers today is this wide range that vintage ports may have. Uh, we have the classic. Uh, we have the flagship wine, we have the vintage of the house, uh, we have the single quinta, and now we have some terroir or very exquisite wines that uh, are even with better selection of wines that rate or that are priced at ultra, ultra premium wines. Uh, I think we should just explore a little bit this uh, uh, approach. Um, I would say... Uh, I would ask and start asking you, what do you feel is the difference between a vintage and a single quinta vintage that used to be, they used to be the second wines of the classic houses from the 20th century? Yes, it's true. It's not um, as mentioned in a different um, talk. Um, we are, IVDP approves a port wine. Uh, but it is um, for IVDP, there is not a difference between a single quinta vintage port and a vintage port um, from a full house vintage or flagship. Uh, vintage. Exactly. And that, that's um, the first thing we have to focus. For the IVDP, there are no differences. Yes. The wine comes here to be that's approved, it. it has vintage potential. Then is a part of the style of the house or it's a part of the marketing strategy of the yes, company. Yes, that's it. So for IVDP, there is a very high standard to approve the wine that are nine out of 10, uh, the score to be to be approved. But in this, there are the single quintas and the full house vintages. Then we have, what are the differences? Be well, first step is the blending. If you have a single vintage uh, quinta, uh, single quinta vintage, it's from a unique estate. While a full house or a flagship, it is a blend from usually a blend from different properties from different estates to have the acidity from one place, the sunny uh, side of the grapes from another place, the full bodied, and so on. In a single quinta, you have to do it all of this from a unique estate. Exactly. This can be more difficult, this can be easier, but yes, there are some differences. This, I would say that this is the regulamentary uh, difference. The second thing is, as you have said, what is um, a single quinta for the producers? Mm -hmm. And yes, it's true that uh, for the big houses of port wine the single quintas were second the second wine of the of the vintages 
and we can talk uh, of well, different different uh, producers. But they were very common until the 90s before the region opened itself to the exports through directly. Uh, we, we would have that on the houses, but uh, now we have this small estate that also produce yes. their wines that can be considered single quinta because the producers only have one quinta. They are not the big estates or the big houses. Yes, this can be a little bit confusing for the consumer to have, uh, well, uh, the communication of a big house and talking about a single quinta and then a small estate from the Douro Valley and to say, no, my wine is always a single quinta. But yes, you have to know, you have to taste all these wines. This is a lot of pleasure to have, to have the opportunity to make the differences between these wines. Yeah. So in, in just one stroke, we hit three types of vintage in this range. The, the classic of the house or the flagship, uh, the single quinta or the wine from only one estate when the company has several estates and the producer vintage, which is always single quinta that, uh, uh, because it doesn't have any more resources to, to get the grapes from. Um, and now... But, uh, um, we're, even, yes, I'm please. sorry, even regarding the, the, the smaller, the smaller produ producer of the door wine, you can have also um, there are some of them that have a second wine, usually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I would say that probably the, sing the single quinta word has lost a little bit of their um, or, or of their relevance. Uh, their level of relevance, but they they can have in some cases the first vintage and the second vintage. It can still appear in the market. Do you think that this? first and second vintages are uh, styles from the winemaker that he wants to show the different expressions for their from their vintages or from their estates that's the idea when you when we have we say a second vintage that may not be uh, a secondary vintage but a, a different style right you're right paulo if you're talking about the um single quinta vintages from the biggest producers that usually blend to have the full house, the flagship uh, vintage, uh, when they do the single quinta is also to uh, give the opportunity to the consumer to have uh, the opportunity to uh, taste the different terroirs. And we are talking about a little bit later about uh, even a singular, uh, smaller terroirs but to taste the singular terrace of the estates that they own. Um, yes, this is a very interesting approach also to have the opportunity. And then later on, if you have more experience, if you have taste the wines from the different uh, single quinta wines from the same producer, you can almost imagine how it blends to make the full house vintage. For example, in the in the declared years, the yes. year, and and I think that's actually another perspective on uh, how a vintage, what a vintage can be, that is being more enhanced now. That it's to uh, the expression of terroir. I think most of the houses are still exploring uh, what they have in land and how now they express their own terroirs, but we have more and more a new. I would say top end ultra premium vintage that was not being seen 10 years ago or 15 years ago that now uh, we see that uh, houses have more and more uh, these ultra premium vintages uh, what do you think about them because this would be I would say the, the 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 most recent part of this range from the classics to the single tintas to the second wines to the wines of the farmer or the producer, and now these ultra premium terroir wines. What's your idea on this? Uh, it's it's this exclusivity of expression that justifies the price and the production. This is very interesting, Paulo, because uh, for one hand we know that the first um, uh, block vintage port. It has uh, 
90 years old. <laughs> but if we think about what has been, uh, and uh, on, on the other hand, if you think about what are the most renowned wines from Burgundy, usually it's from a particular block. Is that exactly? But then, if you th talk about port, we say that most and the best vintage ports are blends from different properties from different states that gives different uh, well, characteristics to, to yeah. have the full profile of a full house vintage. Vintage, yes. And now, I think that what happens is a little bit what you have mentioned uh, yet is that you have wines from a single block, uh, usually a very small uh, block, and that has very high price and they're very high quality. Of course, if you have high quality, you pay more. If it is small production, you also pay more. Even so more. I would say that probably it's for both reasons and mm -hmm. also for the, those who have the opportunity to, to test these and the houses are yeah, the houses or the, the houses or the producers are also giving a unique experience to the consumer and you also pay more for that yes, <laughs> in, in nowadays yeah uh, so yes i think to make this uh, short um, actually we always think about vintages as only one approach but even vintages in the world of port wine have several approaches from the single quintas, only one estate, to the blend of several estates to make a very well-balanced flagship wine, to the wine of the producer, to the second wine when the, the producer or the house wants to express something different and to show the consumer, to this, as you said, block, plot, vineyard, terroir, super premium, uh, exquisite experience. So. Uh, I would say more than one vintage port, although all are approved at the IVDP, uh, we have already several expressions of vintage, right? Absolutely, Paolo. And <laughs> I would say that for our uh, viewers that you should experience and you should dive on this marvelous world of port wine and in this particular case, the marvelous and wonderful wine of vintage port and all of this diversity on the vintage ports. I completely agree with you. Thank you very much. And uh, I hope to Thank see you, you soon. Paul. Thank I you. Thank you. Bye. See you also soon. Bye.